Vindication for the Mountain West came in the form of the Utah State Aggies, eight seed with an 88 72 win over nine seed TCU. Prove both of us wrong. I am Riley Davis of Heat Check CBB. He is Christian Ojakjian. You can find him on Twitter at Odj Hoops, O D J Hoops, however you prefer to say it. And we're here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, breaking down a game in which we sort of thought that TCU would run away with it. They had the better athletes. We were skeptical of how the Mountain West fared in the tournament. Christian, what did you see in this game that led to Utah State getting a definitive win? Well, we thought TCU had better athletes, but <laughs> my eyes told me today that Utah State had better athletes. Like they couldn't, like this kid Falsev and Martinez. I didn't realize how good they were. Like, I'll be honest. Um, when I had watched Utah State in the past, like, I'd just been mostly fo- focused on Osborne and Darius Brown. And Isaac Johnson completely took over this game in the second half. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, like sealing off smaller guys, stepping out and hitting a couple of threes, blocking shots. He had four blocks. Like, he was fantastic. Uh, Darius Brown with some timely shots. Like, Utah State was better all around. And uh, Jacoby Coles was great off TCU's bench. Um, and, you know, we talk about their depth is one of the things in the, in the, in the preview, but like, you know, the, the guard production wasn't really there. Like I like, I love Micah PV's game, but if Jameer Nelson is your best like perimeter shot creator, right? Because, you know, Avery Anderson and uh, Tennyson were kind of relegated to bench roles as the season mm-hmm. went on. Like it just, the juice wasn't there for this TCU team. I kept trying to talk myself into him and, you know, the Mountain West didn't have the best start to the tournament, but this Utah State Aggies team, Ken Palm can hate them as much as they want. Like they won the league. They went 20 and six and they just kicked TCU's ass in the second half. Yeah. I thought, I thought Utah State in particular, the offense. Yeah. You mentioned Ian Martinez. I thought he was all over the place. He was special tonight. Um, I know we talked in the preview about how, how was TCU going to try to contain great Osabor? It wasn't just great Osa where they couldn't guard. It seemed like they couldn't guard anybody. There's a, a couple of plays that stick out to me. I, I want to say it was Martinez's second made three was off a of Osa board pass out of a double team. Um, or it might've been like a hockey assist, whatever it was. They, they doubled Osa Bohr, kicked out to the perimeter, it ended up in Martinez's hands. He fired off for three and the, the closeout was like two or three seconds late. Just looked like there wasn't even an attempt to get a hand up on Martinez and he knocked it down. Um, now I want to say that came a couple possessions over the other play from Osabor where he just took Ernest Uday off the dribble, finished uh, like a reverse layup that it just showed that Utah State just had better a, a better game plan offensively. They executed better and as much as we like TCU's depth, as much as we thought this Jamie Dixon team could be physical and get on the glass and everything, it just didn't happen. I mean, you look at the 21 offensive rebounds, it felt like a lot of the times they got offensive rebound and didn't finish. Mm -hmm. And I remember just when TCU seemed like they had a little bit of life left, my man Micah Peavy made a really nice move on a shot fake, got blocked, got got an offensive rebound, and then he came down with a hook and hold that somewhat wasn't called a flagrant that totally was. He was frustrated, and he pulled him down to the ground with him. But, uh, you know, that was just one example of offensive rebounds that didn't turn into second-chance points. Um, Yeah, I didn't even – I know that we – I mean, only five offensive rebounds for Utah State. They didn't even need – Yeah, I was going to say that they didn't even – Utah State didn't need the second-chance points because they were scoring on the first shot. Yeah, it's insane looking at it that – you know, I mentioned the the rebound, and I didn't even realize that TCU won the rebounding battle by 11, and it just straight up didn't matter. <laughs> um, but that's partially because I thought Utah State's defense was pre- like pretty opportunistic. You know, it's not like they held them to 35% from the f- floor, 31.8% from three, but the most impressive thing is those nine blocks and 10 steals. I think if you're going to be able to get, if you're able to get 19 stocks, it's going to be hard to beat. You're, you're, it's going to be hard for any opponent to beat you in that setting. Yeah, and like even in the first half, right? TCU started played pretty well, and then all of a sudden it was like Great Osborne had like two and ones, and they got a couple run out free runouts off live ball turnovers, and it's like mm-hmm. TCU had a chance to build a little cushion, and they didn't because Utah State, as you said, was opportunistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will have uh, the preview for Utah State's next game. Um, off the top of my head, I'm blanking right now. Who do they? Who's the one seed Purdue. in their bracket? Purdue. Thank you. Let's go ahead and tease it now, though. What do you think is their chance against Purdue? Is this is do we see Matt Painter and the the Boilermakers fall short again in March? Do you think they match up well or do anything that can throw Purdue out of its rhythm? Shit, I mean Utah State's 
wings and guards, like, you know, foul seven Martinez, like they got some size and athleticism and it bothered TCU. Like who says that it can't bother Purdue's guards? I great can kind of, I know he great's not like a big three point shooter, but at least he can mm-hmm. pull the away from the basket, uh, put it on the floor a bit. Like it's, you're never going to be able to stop Edie and it's hard to do what Northwestern and fairly Dickinson, I'm going to say was able to do of just, really rattling him and getting the ball, like just stripping him and like right forcing him to turn it over versus the guards. But uh I mean you just look damn good today. I still think Purdue's gonna find a way to get done, but there's there's angles to Utah State causing problems for Purdue for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Purdue will still ultimately come out triumphant in that, but I don't know, man. I'm in on this Ian Martinez experience. It just seems like he's a psycho on the court. I love those type of dudes who can bring out the edge in his teammates. Uh, and Darius Brown, I know you mentioned he had the timely shots. That one from the logo was crazy. I mean, he finished with 10 assists, too. I, I think, I mean, anytime you have a guy whose hairline goes back to here, that scares me a little bit when Purdue's guards face them. Because, you know, I, Braden Smith and Fletcher <laughs> Lawyer, well, Braden deserves a ton of respect. I think Fletcher has still had uh, some moments this year where he's looked like an underclassman. And when you go up, up against a guard who I'm assuming is in his fourth or fifth year in Darius Brown. Like, and we, we mentioned Martinez is in his fifth year as well. He's in a six. Okay. I I knew I should have guessed it based on the hairline, but um, yeah, they, they have veterans. And like you said, with Osabor, he can, you know, he's not really going to spray threes, but yeah, I, I think his, his ability to put the ball on the deck can at least test Edie a little bit. So, yeah, for sure. I'm just looking at Edie's third. I didn't even realize 21 boards today. Like, yeah, maybe, on. maybe nobody's really testing Zach Edie. Um, but you know, if you if you want to, if you if you believe in Utah State, now would be a great time for me to give a shout to the sponsors of the Sleeper Mus- the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, which is my bookie. So if you're still on the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet the nonstop action of March Madness with my bookie. They have a huge selection of straight bets, props, and odds boosts, whatever your style. My bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. If you sign up now, you can take advantage of the welcome offer and get a first deposit bonus of up to a thousand dollars. Christian, do you know what that promo code is? Sleepers. It is sleepers. Make it as make it as easy as possible on the people. So shout out to my bookie. They've sponsored us throughout these past two weeks when we've been covering conference tournaments, when we've been cover, covering NCAA tournaments. Uh, I'm going to close with this. Again, this isn't the official preview. That'll come later. But Christian, what do you think? What is the one thing, if you had to single out one X factor for Utah State to get the upset, move on to the Sweet 16, what is it? If blank happens, they win. Turnover, turnover, produce guards. I would say, get mm-hmm. some easy baskets. And uh, as you said in the in the preview for this game, Utah State doesn't run a ton, but they're really good at it when they do. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can get easy ones on Purdue. Edie misses some free throws, you know, and uh, they don't shoot the ball off from three. Like you got to play a really great game to be Purdue, but Utah State is capable of, of giving that great game. Yeah, they had 19 points off of turnovers today. I definitely think they could replicate something like that or shouldn't they need to replicate that should they hope to win uh i'm like i i really like your x factor for me uh, i think it has to be ian martinez and darius brown completely and utterly outperforming Braden and fletcher lawyer it's ultimately why i don't think it's going to happen because i think Braden is that dude and he can cover up for any any number of mistakes the team makes but yeah i think they both would need to outscore them Whatever happens, though, we will be back on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel previewing that game, recapping it. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you throw it a like. Make sure you get in the comments. Get that algorithm going. I'm Riley Davis. He's Christian Ojakjian. I did get his last name right this time. Uh, Thanks for tuning in.